everybody, this is the Marine with Backpacking with a Hammock. This video is for the people that have never used a gathered in hammock or just purchased one or for people that have one and after a while being in it, laying in it, they find it to be uncomfortable and never would think about spending the night in one. In this video, instead of talking about and showing you the basic concept of a gathered in hammock, we're going to look at it at a different angle. We're going to look at the three biggest mistakes that people would make when they purchase a gathered in hammock. Number one is how they lay in it. Number two is how to set it up or to hang it. And number three is the cold butt syndrome. So when we look at these three mistakes, we're gonna go from the third to the second to the first, which is the biggest mistake people make. Number three would be the frozen butt syndrome. One of the first things that people notice is when the temperature drops below 68 degrees, their underside will start getting cold. If they're laying in their back or sitting in it, their butt will get cold, hence the frozen butt syndrome. And as the temperature gets colder, of course, your backside gets colder. Because of the air circulating underneath you, you have to have some sort of insulation underneath you. So you could use a air mattress, but it has to be insulated air mattress. Otherwise, you could use a mat. These closed foam mats work the best, and you can get these really cheap at Walmart or Target or any department store. And they work very well, and this would probably get you down to 40 degrees. And what you do is, you take it, you lay this in your hammock, and then you get in it. And one thing about the foam mattress, it shifts around and you really have to work with it to get it exactly where you want it. So it isn't the best way of doing it, but for cheaply, it works very well. And now my backside is not cold. I don't feel any coldness in it with this mat underneath me. One thing I recommend, if you're gonna buy a hammock and you plan to start off using a mat, because under quilt can be very expensive. So if you're starting off, I really suggest getting a hammock that's a double layer. So there's two layers here where the mat will slide in there and it won't shift around. So if you're thinking about purchasing a hammock and you're going to start off using a closed foam mat, I really suggest getting a two-layer hammock. Otherwise, the best insulation underneath you is called an underquilt. This one's made out of goose down. You can find them cheaper now. Hammock Gear is making one with duck down, so they're a lot cheaper, right around $100 worth. This is made out of goose down. It's very warm, and you can get different thickness loft. It depends on how many ounces of down you put in there for the temperature you want to reach. This is a 40 degrees, I have a 20 degrees, and I have one that'll go to 10 below zero. The underquilt has shock cord on each end and has a hook there, and I hook it to my suspension on each end and it comes underneath. Then you take it. Put the hammock inside there. And when I put this under quilt underneath me, I can feel the warmth already. It's really starting to get warm. They're very expensive, but it's a good investment. If you really want to get into backpacking with a hammock or hammock camping, I really suggest saving and getting a nice under quilt for you. For a top quilt, you can use a sleeping bag. Just zip it down 18 inches from the bottom and just flip it over and use it like a top quilt. So you don't really don't have to go out and buy an under quilt right away, but I really suggest to purchase an under quilt. Top quilt, you can wait. Boy, I can feel my butt getting warm right now. Now, if you're in temperatures that are above 68 degrees, then you don't have to worry about an under quilt. And if you're just going out to lounge at a picnic area or just kicking back for the afternoon, I wouldn't worry about an underquilt unless it gets really cold, then you want to get a mat or underquilt. A few years ago, we are up in the Boundary Waters and my nephew brought a friend that made a hammock, a DIY hammock, and he had no 
under insulation. He didn't have a mat. He didn't bring an under quilt. And he said, well, I'll just put blankets underneath and or the sleeping bag would be just fine. Now you remember when you have a down sleeping bag, it lost and that's what gives you the insulation. And when you lay on it, it flattens down and there's no insulation value at all. So he set his hammock up by a lake and he was just freezing. And I remember he woke up in the middle of the night because of the wind coming off the lake and going back in the middle of the woods and hanging his hammock back there trying to get out of the wind. And even without that, he was just, he was cold. That was a big mistake. So any type of insulation underneath you is a must if you're gonna be under 68 degrees, especially if you're gonna sleep overnight in it. Very important. Number two, the second biggest mistake is how to set up the hammock or how to hang it. The proper angle for a hammock suspension, either be it straps or a whoopee sling, is a 30 degree angle. To achieve this, the farther the tree, the distance between the tree, the higher the straps that attach the tree will have to go. So if the tree was farther, I would take the suspension and move it up higher and higher to achieve the 30 degree. To figure out the 30 degree angle, there's one little trick I'd like to show you. Is what you do is you take, what you do is you take your finger, keep it parallel to the ground and your thumb up. And if it hits the suspension, that there is a 30 degree angle. They say that 12 to 15 feet, 17 feet works best to achieve this 30 degree angle. I have 11 foot hammocks and sometimes I go a little bit farther, but I try to go as high as I can. Another way you can tell if you have a proper hang is if you have a ridge line on there and if you take it and you pinch it, if you can bend it and it's not too taunt where you can bend it and not too loose, this is a perfect hang. A lot of people will take their hammock and they'll have it almost attached to the tree without any distance. That thing is sagging and it would be pretty tough to get comfortable in that. Now the number one biggest mistake that people make is how to lay in it. Gathered in hammock like the Enos, the Dutches, the Blackbirds, the War Bonnet are becoming very popular every day. I see a lot of people hanging in their hammocks in the public parks, campgrounds, picnic areas. And I have to say about 90% of these people are laying in their hammocks. When I walk by, they're laying in them wrong. When people think of hammocks, they think of hammocks that you purchase at a department store made of cotton twine or rope that goes through a wooden spreader bar to the end of the stand that are probably put on a patio and, and which are not the most comfortable and they are very tippy, let alone sleeping in them overnight. The problem is their body is shaped like a banana laying in it. They just lay straight in it. You know, our bodies are not shaped like a banana, well, most of us, so no wonder they find it to be very uncomfortable. There is a way to lay in a hammock and I'd like to show you how to properly lay in a hammock. What people tend to do when they get in a hammock, they lay straight in it. My feet is up high, my head's up high, I'm shaped like a banana. It isn't too bad right now, but it's starting to get uncomfortable. And so what you wanna do, the proper way to lay in a hammock is to lay asymmetrical. So what you do is you turn twist almost like you're trying to get get in it sideways you want to lay asymmetrical in there and you just shift around until you find yourself flat right now I'm laying in this flat this is very comfortable and this is a proper way to lay in a hammock I could sleep in this all night this is very comfortable I can just fall asleep right now it's very comfy the other way straight up and down is very uncomfortable you want to lay in this asymmetrical and try to get as a flat lay as you can. So you're always adjusting, twisting, and turning until you get to the proper, most comfortable lay. Each person's different. What I suggest, if you're taller, if you're looking at purchasing a hammock, this is a wide hammock. The wider the hammock, the more comfortable it is for people that are taller. One of the problems that people have with the gathered in hammock, it punches up here and it runs down into my calf here, and I can feel pressure on my calf. Probably the first time you do it, you're gonna have that problem. To get rid of that is what you do is you take your foot with your heel and you push down on that fabric. And as you can see, it's gone. 
And now I'm laying very flat, I'm very comfortable. Like I said, I could just, I could fall asleep. And when I sleep in a hammock, this is the best sleep I get is in a hammock. I could just sleep all night. When we hike many miles, I get in this hammock, man. I am just comfortable. Now this is a proper way to lay in a hammock. One other thing I'd like to add about a gathered in hammock is it's also not just for laying down in it, it's also for sitting. So to properly sit in a hammock, you want your feet flat, so you set it so your feet is just flat on the ground so you can sit on it, you can lounge back on it. Man, this is real comfy. You can sit and read a book. This is really nice. You can put this up, put your head behind there. One of the problems that people have is they may have a hammock that has a thin material so it stretches a lot and the pressure it pushes down in the butt and the hammock comes up to the thighs here or if you have a wide hammock that could happen too. One way to alleviate that problem is you just take, get off the hammock and you take this and you just fold that material over like that and you sit down and there's no pressure. This is a really nice, nice, nice chair for doing whatever you want to do in here, sitting back, just kicking back. So that's how you alleviate that pressure on the back of your thighs, is you just fold that end over. I hope you found this video to be helpful. This is the proper way to lay in a hammock, so if you're thinking about purchasing one, if you have one, you're having problems laying in there, getting uncomfortable, this is how you do it. If you have any questions, leave it down below in the comments. Otherwise, what I really recommend is this book, The Ultimate Hang by Derek Hansen. This book is really an easy read, as you can see, a lot of illustrations in there. This is a great book. This book I give to my friends and family member that I start hammock camping. I always will purchase this book and give it to them. It's very helpful. I strongly recommend this. Well, thank you for watching. This is the Marine with Backpacking with a Hammock, signing off.